so where we left off last time, uh, the four of you had taken a trip into the jungle and found a deserted shack. Uh, when going to search it while the uh, while your deckhands were going off scavenging for uh, supplies and materials, you uh, you went to search and uh, in doing so disturbed a couple of large snakes which attacked the party you defeated them in short order going into the shack and finding that its former occupant was deceased uh, but were unable to learn anything else from this whether it was from the poor state of decay of the building or uh, if somebody had beaten you to it you don't know uh, having nothing to show for it you went back to the beach where two members of your crew had found a an amount of uh, repair materials for the ship and uh, to cure your satisfaction started transporting that back to your vessel the other two of your crew were nowhere to be seen though until uh, you'd taken some time to rest and recover from your encounter with the uh, with the large scaly worms when the other two approached uh, carrying some uh, foods and game that they had sourced from in the jungle uh, notified you of a an odd sight on the far uh, far end of the beach on the other side of a headland uh, you yourselves moved to go and look and uh, upon see I think, uh, can't remember who it was exactly one of you saw it and you took it to be a ship's mast although somewhat broken and tattered you went to explore further and upon cresting the headland you found uh, a shipwreck uh, on on the beach high up against the uh, the break uh, the breakwater of the beach you moved towards to investigate further uh, sort of with casual casual abandon but uh, as you grew near uh, Hector you and only you uh, heard the sound of movement from within this uh, this vessel this, this broken vessel and with that we will go to We will go to this map. Is that pulling all of you in? Hello? Yep. <laughs> Can you all yep. see the map? Looks good to me. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Uh, yeah. Let's just, nice, man. Let me just check on the... Uh, stream because it's not loading up there we go why is it not loading up on the stream it's like five minutes behind for Trill and I yeah yeah stream is I mean if it's uh, as long as uh, it's doing stuff that's fine uh, yeah probably... as long as as far as yeah I've, I've probably got the lag set too uh, too slow I don't know what this don't know why that's up. Several minutes time. Yeah. 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 I was gonna say just as long as the um, as long as the the uptime is still perfectly fine, then mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, right? It's just delayed stream. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. But, uh, from my end, like it, it still sounds perfect. Like, yeah. Weird. Right. Well, with that, uh, let's get this rolling. We are going to go into combat. So if you can all roll initiative, please. Sure. Dropping right in, dude. <laughs> no ambient music. Gotta get some. Gotta get some rolling.
Damn, I rolled a 17. He got better than me. Just waiting on Julio. No, I rolled. All right. Uh, just, I just did build uh, regular perception. Oh, yeah, you just did a straight <laughs> perception. Yeah. I think you can right click and just make yeah, that I'll, initiative. Yeah, I'll put it in. Like yeah, on your end. Yeah. No, I can just click on it. Right. Oh, there we go. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at that. What's the. Well, that's interesting. What's the status effect on there? Uh, Look at what the uh, that is uh, due to the new dedication, Marshal Zora. Ah, okay. We'll see what that does then. Right, let's uh, let's go. Why is it? Let's begin the encounter. Why is it starting with Hector? On, there we go. Okay. Uh, at present. Uh, only Hector is aware of movement within the ship. So uh, you're all moving up there. Uh, what does Willie want to do? I guess with little to no information, I'd probably just, I guess, hold my initiative until after Hector goes. Nice. Okay. That moves you down the ranking, I believe. Yeah, like so. I think the best way to play I would probably be to put him at nineteen. Well, is like update initiative to nineteen, or yeah, just like drag that. him, drag him down. You just drag. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so let's go. Uh -huh. Back up to Hector then. So go on, Hector. Okay. You, you've heard um, some so movement. Yes, uh... yeah, sorry. You carry on. All right. Um, so I guess uh, before doing anything, I guess I would like make a motion, like you know, telling everybody like, wait a second, right? Um, and then kind of like, you know, turn and just like try my best to essentially whisper, like, oh, I hear something, you know, up ahead, right? Uh, and then, hmm, I think Hector would take a, I guess, uh, would you count that as an action to do that, to well, the, spread the, some information? The, um, yeah. No, I'll, I'll, I'll let you disseminate that one freely, it's just part of, uh, part of approaching okay. this, because we've, we've just gone straight into this. Fair enough. Okay. Um, and then I guess, uh, so I can't really see inside the ship. I, do I see this like hole a bit? I'm assuming like based on the map, I can basically see what's on the map, right? So like uh, basically yes. I can see that the ship has like a massive hole in it, but I can't really see inside. Yeah, you you, uh, you probably can see okay. the dark shadow at the uh, under the front of the ship, but everything, you know, in the, the back of the ship and further in, you, you can't see from your current position. Okay, uh, then I think I'll use one action to move. Uh, essentially, I want to move just up a bit, trying to... Hmm, I think I'll go like here, right? And just do what I can to see if I see anything further beyond what's uh, what's here. Okay. Uh, um, so you... you You've or moved maybe like listening closer to see if I can like discern the sound. So you've moved and you are actively seeking to uh, to see what's in there. So uh, I'd say uh, exactly roll a perception check for me, please, as one of the actions. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Okay, and with that. Uh, Do you see a figure through the gloom? Is it... <clears throat> you, 
you see the source of <clears throat> you see the source of the uh, of the sound uh, within. Uh, you don't know if it's aware of you yet, but yeah, you can just see it in the gloom under the mid deck. Hmm. And then I guess my so I've, I've used one action to move, one action to get here, and then I think my final action would be to. Uh, I'm wondering if. Hmm. Uh, if I make a, is let's see. Well, no, I guess that doesn't matter. Uh, I would like to make like a recall knowledge check to see if like I don't recognize what this creature is, so I'm seeing if there's any way I can take like a recall knowledge to see if I can identify like what I'm seeing you know okay uh, get some information about the creature that I'm facing let's see so is that a yeah that's a skill isn't it is it that's an action I'm yeah just... it's um yeah it's a type of action I think there's there's different ways to do it um I think like the baseline is something like I think like society if i'm not mistaken but then there's like specific or like unspecific so like if this has like any any like specific stuff like if i had like i don't know like uh there's a there's a chart for creature recall knowledge uh, yeah yeah creature recall knowledge. it'll tell you what skill to use depending on what trait the creature has yeah it usually is an easy or very easy before <laughs> adjusting <laughs> for rarity yeah that's pretty good, yeah. Here. Oh, right, there we go. Yeah, so I guess... Um... I'd, I'd say, yeah, it's probably... Oh, I mean, I was thinking it'd be something from your past, uh, like history, but that's probably your society. Unless you society. Of, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll make a society check to see if I... Yeah, um... Hmm. I think there's more like a... I think this is kind of like a GM thing, right? Like you kind of put it in your hands, but um, yeah, uh, I, I think, I think yeah, I guess society. Is the one. Like if I, yeah, fair enough. Okay, all right, I'll go ahead and make a society check to see if anything about this creature appears. Like, have I ever seen one of these before? Do I know anything about it? Like, you know, potentially like uh, weaknesses or strengths, etc. Okay, uh, well, with fifteen, uh, say that you you may not have encountered this yourself but you you have heard tales uh of this creature uh okay th this is a uh the the description seems to fit a uh, of a sea hag uh and with a 15 I'll give yeah, you okay. one let's see weaknesses uh may not help you uh but it is weak against cold iron. Cold iron. Mm. Okay. All right. Great. Sure. Okay. Then um, yeah. I guess uh, I guess like as like, like a little final little thing, I just try to like inform and relay that information as best I can, but like quiet, you know. <laughs> if, you know, just like. Just yeah, like I'll try to like. Uh, I'll give you that since in since we're in an encounter and it's been more of a fact finding uh, turn. Yeah, I'll give you that one, so you can you can sort of pass that on through. Uh, okay. Through your uh, pirate habits and means and various hand signals and probably Julio looking back at you and shrugging his shoulders like what? <laughs> right, who's next? Right. Well then, so, um, yeah, that's my turn. Right, with that, uh, yeah, Willie, now you get in and now you know what's there. So, how is Willie going to respond to this? All right. Willie kind of walks up to Hector. I, what? What is that, Captain? Sorry, you're not a captain. Hector. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah just captain. like, a, I believe it to be a creature such as a, a sea hag. But I've never encountered one myself, so I'm not sure of its abilities. Uh, I have read somewhere that they are weak to cold iron, although uh, I myself do not have anything such as that on my, on my person. They're quite dangerous. Uh, told to be. 
I guess we may soon find out. All right. Well, I'm going to reach out for Hector's weapon, and I'm going to cast Rune Equipment on it to oh, nice. help him get prepared for whatever it's going to do. Okay, right. so... And that's that's all it. I got. Like, gives Victor a plus one. Yeah, and also yeah. Uh, increases the number of weapon damage dice. So, like, whenever I roll damage, it's it'll be double, basically. Double the die. Yeah, plus one, yeah, plus one strike, yeah. Yeah, plus one but, uh, to attack rolls. And, yeah, I mean, damage dice to two. Oh, very good. So, that's two ac uh, how How many actions was that spell? Uh, move was one, runic weapon was two. Okay, so that's uh, that's your actions for this turn. Very good. Okay, Julio, you've seen Hector sort of gesturing and mouthing a few words at you, and you're aware of something in the uh, wreck. Yeah, I'll uh, draw my weapon for one action. Uh, it's already drawn technically, but it wasn't. And uh, I think he's just gonna move down here. Gather up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like it. In case they have a nail, fucking <laughs> eviscerate us. <laughs> Stop bunching up to a knife. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's a nice space for here, Curio. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe the, the thing is that like if you're near me, like, maybe I just the marshal's aura, right? The you know, you feel braver when you're near me. So exactly. it's it's got everybody gathering up. You know. <laughs> and uh, I don't think he has anything else he can really do, so I think, uh, is it two actions to hold an action? So, like, in case, you know... Um... Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. You spend it two is. actions to hold an action. Oh, yeah, to, yeah, to ready action. a single action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Which so. you then use as a reaction. <laughs> it's fine, chilling. <clears throat> yeah. So you can, like, ready, like, a, I don't know, if it rushes us or something, maybe an attack or something. Uh, so, I, well, I can see it from here, right? Mm, it's touch and go. Uh, you could probably, with with knowing that there's something there, you can probably just make out something billowing past the side of the hull. Uh, I'll I'll say that you you're aware. Okay, so of I it. can't see it. Okay. You know you can't see it fully. Yeah, it is it is blocked by the hull. Wow. Yeah, I need to be able to. I need to be able to. I need to be able to see it to use demoralize. So. No, I'm done. Yeah, from where you are, there's a there's a solid section of hull between you and it very well okay uh, if we're moving on now it is the sea hag's turn wake up sea hag uh, the sea hag is going to step out on make it move Just gonna step out to there, so we can see you all. Because he doesn't know how many of you are here yet, and yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, just gonna try this. Because it can see, it can see you, Hector, uh, oh, nice. as the the one at the front. So uh, I need Hector to roll a uh, a will save. Uh, what is it? It's will save. Okay. Yeah, will save. All right. So let's see. Not my best roll, you know. Uh, okay. Failure. failure. So, so failure is frightened one and slowed one. Frightened one, slowed one. Oh, if it's a fear effect, don't you get the plus one from your own? 
Yeah, it's already there. Okay, yeah. it's already there. Good. good. Yeah. <clears throat> so this thing scares me, essentially. Yep. Damn, it slowed me too. Fuck. Yep. It slowed is nasty. Oh, right. uh, and that's its turn. Uh. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to right. Curio. Let's what we're getting here. So, uh, the pitting of a mean last, uh, last in the initiative order, he's very obviously distracted and distraught. Uh, uh, seeing the uh, the state of the boat, uh, he's uh, obviously seen many many boats come into the docks, like uh, in various states of disrepair. But this is his first time actually seeing essentially the corpse of a boat. Um, so he's he's not quite caught up yet on what's uh what's going on over here the 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 huddle. So he doesn't want to move into that nice convenient space there. Um, <laughs> no, he's uh, yeah, he, he kind of just wastes his turn, not uh, not really realizing what's going on yet. Nice. So is that curio? He's just uh, he's just sort of like uh, distressed over the state of this of this ship uh, high and dry on the sand. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Curio's there, just sort of in, in sort of like in a distress, uh, distressed trance at the uh, at the state of this yeah. thing of the sea being on land. Uh, we'll move on to Hector. Hector, you uh, the creature has uh, appeared. Mm -hmm from around the side and cast its eye on you uh, in a piercing, glaring way and you feel a chill run through your body. What do you do? Yeah. So I'm slowed one, so that means I only have two actions this round and I'm also uh, feared. Um, so, uh, I think... Hmm. I think... Uh, Hmm. Damn, what do I want to do here? Uh, I'm uh, <laughs> thinking in character. So, uh, considering this new uh, level up with the martial aura and all that stuff, um, I think despite being feared, uh, Hector is trying to put on like a, a brave face, essentially. Um, and so, like, even though he's kind of like obviously shaken by this attack, uh, I think. <laughs> I think uh, Hector is going to run on in. So, um, uh, I mean, that's it. Fri frightened in PF2 one isn't, the same is as, get... isn't the same as a frightened in D&D, &D, so you can do that, can't you? Yeah, I can still move forward. Um, yeah, I think like maybe like Hector just kind of like whispers something to himself, right? Like, uh, you know, about like just facing the fear head on, essentially, and then we'll just rush forward. Um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> for everybody else with the with the marshal's aura. Um, yeah, so one action to move forward, and then the second action uh, is to attack. Um, just targeting down this creature that popped out of nowhere and just put the fear in him, right? Um, and I think that'll be. Actually, I don't think it. I don't think it matters, right? Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um say exacting strike but that only have two actions so it doesn't matter so yeah just the one strike um so yeah i'll rush forward look to attack see uh see what i can get out of it so ah, a little too shaken mm. um yeah rush forward but just maybe not with the attack completely but the creature is a lot more maybe uh capable then Hector's ready and maybe the fear has kind of slowed him down just a bit um, but he's still right up in the creature's face yeah that's, that's... maybe like with that because I think it the slow drops yeah yeah uh, there we go 
I yeah, imagine. slowed for one round. Yeah, that's that's right. So yeah, between the uh, the 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 feared, uh, the frightened, uh, you know, a frightening visage of the creature, and the billowing clothes, you, Hector swings and just cuts a few threads away. Uh, but yes, uh, you are indeed up in the fray, Willie. It's your turn. Well, seeing Hector run in, Willie's going to try to, you know, make him less scared and try to purge him a little bit, cheer him on. Um, he's going to throw out a bardic inspiration. Um, I'm sorry. Um, he's going to try to Pitch up a better tune because of Matt. And then he's going to Bardic Inspiration. Uh, lingering that. Need a performance check. Hmm. Don't think thirteen is a success uh, for this level anymore. No, no, uh, that will be. So, bardic inspiration happens. It's just one round. Of... Okay. Uh, All right. So everybody can see inspire curves, but it's only one round rather than. Yeah, it's only one round. Fair enough. Cool. So yeah, you can all drag that one I'm in. Spend my focus point. So that's good. So is that Willie's turn? That is Willie's turn. <laughs> I can hear you playing it. Uh, so yeah, Willie, uh, you can now see uh, this creature that has uh, appeared from the gaping hole in the uh, in the ship's hull. <clears throat> and while you are not uh, frightened by it, it's uh, it does unnerve you a bit and, and uh, puts you off off your tune a little bit. So you, you've you've not played your best. But we are we are there. Uh, are we so that's everything, and we're free to go on to Julio. Okay. And yes, you can see it now, Julio. Yes. So. Uh... Julio, run up. Attempt a demoralize. Get in here, Julio. <laughs> Once against their will, DC. And I fucking suck. <laughs> that's okay. Six. Uh, Those are some nice rolls. <laughs> that's uh, okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, and uh, then he's just gonna fucking strike at this thing. Oh. Yeah, okay, so we know at That's least an 18 it. doesn't hit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Julio, you rush up and uh, get alongside Hector. The, the creature has been focused and uh, the last minute turns to see you. Uh, but is unmoved by uh, your attempt to intimidate and uh, with a sort of indifferent in, indifference it, dod it, it moves and just dodges the blow that uh, that you strike at it with uh, with your rapier uh, a few more tattered uh, strips of material fall from its clothing and now we're on to uh, the sea hag itself. Uh, okay, with uh, 
with you being there as a new threat, Julio, and the last one to take a swipe at it. Sea Hag is going to turn and take a swipe back at you. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's <Christ> Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. not, it does. <laughs> We're all today. <laughs> it it swipes with its left hand and misjudges the position of the hull, battering, uh, and in doing so, takes uh, takes the strength out of that swing. It's going to go for a swipe with its right hand. That one will do it. Uh. Oh, no, sure. Yeah, I did apply the map. Good. Uh, and with it, with its right hand, it rakes across your chest. Uh, not digging too deep, uh, but. Yeah, you've got a nice line of scratches now across your chest there, Julio. Let's see if we can apply this to the right. Yep. Uh, and what else can we do? Uh, oh, I should have gone for that one. Uh, I think that's... Uh, it's, used, it's used both hands. That's all it's going to do for now. We'll move on to Curio, who's at the back of the ship looking at uh, looking at the ship's stern. Curio, get in here! <laughs> yeah, so uh, Curio's finally uh, snapped to realise that you know something's going, <laughs> something's going on. Um, so, right, how does I do the movement in multiple parts? Uh, what do you mean? If, uh... Oh, um, like how you set it and then continue moving forward? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I believe it's uh, either control or alt as you drag. Back, yeah. I, I could have sworn it was... Uh, was it shift or something? It was left, right click, but... Wait, what? No, control is to... Ah, then, okay. Well, where, where are you trying to get to? Because you, you can just count it forward, can't you? Oh, yeah. Go the left click to set your stops. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you, not, uh... you you drag and then you click where you're going first and then you keep holding control the whole time. There you go. And there you go. Yeah, we, we yeah, I was doing right clicks because I am smart. So there, right. But it's like twenty-five feet uh, total. Um, I am going to uh, channel elements, and as part of the same action, we've got a part effect. Uh, I can do a one action impulse so I target the hag uh, da, da, da. With just hover over and press T uh, guess Hey, finally, I could, yes. uh, I could pull it. Let's go. Uh, da, da, da. So, this is a one action one, so I don't get my constitution modifier and it's ranged, so I don't get my strength modifier either. Wait, what? Oh. 
I thought I could damage. Uh, okay. There you go. There we go. And you rolled the same thing twice. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted my luck. No. There you go. Yes. Uh, and it's uh, the wood element, isn't it? For your yeah. So yeah. Do do you want to describe how uh, Followed, how it uh, takes effect? Yeah. There are plenty of uh, planks around, so uh, one of them lifts up and flies right into its face. Yeah, yeah. Solid uh, smack. Yeah, one of the uh, planks half buried in um, sand springs up and smacks it across the head, uh, visibly shaking it uh, for a split second. Okay. Uh, and as my last action, I will blast again. Go for it. Multiple attack penalty, though. Oof. Oof. Uh, so, yeah. That is a critical failure. I don't think there are any, are there any critical failure um, effects on... Hopefully, uh, hopefully I don't hit Julia on the back of the head. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll have that. Yeah, your, uh, <laughs> your effect this time... Uh, Blasts into the ship. Uh, it was already damaged, but further damaging the uh, the partially ruined hull, and that leaves a bit of, st of a stain on your soul, Curio, uh, inflicting more damage on this this yeah. item of craft. <laughs> you almost see us. <laughs> yeah, roll me a will save. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, uh, um, that's my turn. Back up to Hector then. All right, so finally, kind of shaking off like the the slow to move uh, situation, right? Um, just kind of like shaking, basically shaking that off, like you know, putting it by me uh, and dropping the fear, especially with um, the uh, inspire courage, right? Uh, kind of coming into effect. Um, I think uh, Hector is going to first action. Uh, I believe is actually going to look to flank the creature. So, um, as it's attacking uh, Julia, I think Hector's going to like you know like tell Julia like uh, um, like I'll get behind it, right? Uh, and then I think uh, I'll do one action to move here. Okay. Uh, and then I will target the creature. Essentially, while it's focused on Julia, um, I'll target the creature first with an exacting strike. Um, just in case, you know. Uh, so, I'll post it. Just, uh, just so we're aware. And then, um, yeah, I'll take a strike with the Alcada. Uh, that misses, so. Jesus, these rolls are terrible. Uh, so thankfully I missed. Well, not thankfully, but <laughs> I missed. So then the second attack will be at the same uh, full rather than with multi-attack penalty. So I'll take a, a second strike at this creature. Oh, that's better. There Critical we go. hit. <laughs> um, so much critical, yeah. All right. So um, yeah, the first shot misses, and then. Um, I guess I see Julio get hit, right, and like that kind of inferior detector. Uh, so then I, the second strike is much more, uh, much better aimed. Yeah, very well aimed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, you didn't take kindly to oh, that how shit, <laughs> oh, so go on <laughs> describe what happens oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> jesus christ i didn't expect that <laughs> yeah yeah i think i appreciate the assist yeah i think um i think maybe like what everybody else sees who was in range to see right uh hector probably has like this really um this I don't know this uh maybe like unnerving look in his eyes 
um, as uh, Hector just kind of steps forward, and I think he'll just press the Halkata, like, straight to the back where the creature's heart should be, right? Like, maybe, like, grabbing it around, the, like, you know, like, holding it in place as he just, like, uh, pushes the blade through, and then we'll just, like, rip it back and drop the creature down, and then, uh, yeah, Hector just, like, uh, very intimidating, I guess, uh, in this moment, just kind of, like, spits down at the creature, right? Like, uh... And then immediately, like, without even, like, being aware of his uh, surroundings, I guess he's kind of in the ship, so there might be, like, more stuff inside the ship, but um, without even, like, being aware of that, as, as soon as he, like, throws down the creature and can tell that it's dead, uh, he'll just, like, look up at uh, Julia, be like, uh, are you all right? You know? Yeah, I'm good. Hmm. That was, uh, thank you. So, uh, I had to just Remind me not to, uh... Stand in front of you whenever you uh, <laughs> use yeah. that thing. Uh, and then Hector will kind of like shake it off, and then that's the end of my turn. Uh, yeah, and with that, the uh, the threat is neutralized, uh, and the uh, the encounter is at an end. Uh, you being in the ship, you can, well, it's quite gloomy. There's nothing else. Like this, uh, this in the ship. So, <laughs> well done. Yeah, I was expecting that to last a bit longer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well done. Wow. Nice one. It's really the runic weapon. That's like, you know, that's where that comes from, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you always get stabbed. Hector just goes into a rage and hacks this thing to pieces. Like, oh. Yeah. All right. It's, it's been a rough, you know, couple of <laughs> sessions for Hector, you know, so he's, he's kind of like needed this like release, you know. He's, so. he's, he's, he's had a big win. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> fucking up on the ship, <laughs> fucking up with the snakes, like, you know, there's a. So for him, it's like, okay, right. I, I can no longer, I can't let these people continue to see me as like <laughs> completely incompetent, right? So, um,. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, yes. Uh, with a what is effectively a brief scuffle, uh, once the sea hag uh, showed itself uh, with some minor wounds to Julio, Hector is enraged and downs uh, downs the creature with uh, a mighty blow after finding his point of aim uh, and running it through and now you are uh, you are there at the sand in the shadow of this stricken ship's hull with just the seabirds the jungle uh, noises and the sound of uh, waves lapping on the on the sand uh, what would you like to do now Hector will, you know, like, uh, if any of you have ever experienced, like, the uh, the sudden, like, adrenaline drop, you know? Um, I think that's what's happening with Hector at the moment. So I think Hector's just going to, like, now that everything's okay, uh, I think he's just going to, like, step out of the boat. And uh, this little, like, barrel that's a little bit messed up, I think he just sits on it, right? Like, he just takes a seat and uh, just kind of, like, you know, gets his breath, essentially. Okay, so while uh, while Hector is uh, taking a bit of a load off, uh, we'll go. We'll sort of carry on the initiative order. Uh, Willie, is is there anything you uh, you would like to do at this moment in time? Uh, you've got this boat in front of you. The the hold is open to the elements. There's definitely stuff in there. Uh, this this broken. Uh, debris from the ship all around you. Uh. Um, probably going to ask Curio what he thinks happened to this all. Uh, what, what do you think would cause this big of a hole? Do you think it was just the reefs? Um, can, I, can I roll my crafting lore? You certainly can. 
Well, so yeah, crafting, but with uh, hip, uh, hip building. Uh... So 21 total. 21, okay, excellent. Uh, Kirio, you take a look around the beach and you can see with the... Uh, you. You have all already uh, come through one of the obstacles to reach this coast, and that is the uh, the uh, submerged reefs that ring the bays. So, first off, it, it, you can imagine a ship in a storm uh, passing through that would already take some damage, uh, and you can see some signs of that, but that's something that would mainly affect the keel area. But the large gash in the side you look back at the headland that you've passed and you can see if the ship was driven sideways onto those rocks it would easily it would easily weaken the hull uh, to the point where further uh, pounding against rocks maybe some of the ones that you can see uh, embedded in the actual beach itself would open up like this 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 ship seems to have uh, founded in a storm and and been washed up this way So, yeah, uh, relay that. Uh, yeah, it seems like uh, she was uh, picked up by uh, a huge wave and thrown against these rocks and then left here to die on the beach. Um, yeah. She's uh, suffered a rougher fate than most, uh, than most ships. I wonder where that, where that creature came from then. Hmm. Bilio, would you like light? Probably I kind of just... reach my hand out. Uh, sure. I'll touch your weapon and cast light on it to make it glow. So looking inside right. is easier. I'll poke my hand in it. Okay. Uh... Oh, that's true. Uh... Julia, roll me a perception check, please. Uh, even with the light, uh, the this is not an old wreck, but it has been here. Uh, it was washed up in a storm, and the. Uh, you know, sand has washed in through the hole, and the the uh, the cargo that was stored in the hold has been thrown about. Uh, all you're seeing is is sort of like a tumbled jumble and and, uh, and and shadows being thrown here and there. Nothing's really making a lot of sense. Uh, even with a nine, though, what I will say is uh, towards the rear of the ship. Uh, although this isn't a grander ship. Uh, as grand. This isn't as uh, large a ship as what you are. This is, this is even smaller than that. There is a, uh, a room with the door at the at the stern of the hold. A room, you said. Hmm. Yes. There's a you're the there is a a, a constructed bulkhead with with a door in it. Uh, across the across the rear of the hold. Sure, he'll uh, head over there and see if he can get the door open. Okay. Uh, I would say with the uh, the way the sh things have been thrown about and the uh, the sand, we're looking at a looking at some kind of strength check. Uh, how do we do this? Oh, it's uh, it'll be. It'll be an athletics check. All right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you uh, you work your way uh, through the uh, the debris. You uh, you know tr trip and stumble a couple of times. And yeah, I, I you... walk over. <laughs> Go on. 
I, I, fall, I slip on something and I fucking slam my head into the knob of the door. Yeah, and and, and in doing so, uh, in doing so, you they actually crash. break break the handle off the door, making it more difficult to to force open. <laughs> yeah, the door yeah. the door is still <laughs> firmly closed. Uh, uh, I'm fine. <laughs> I roll up my sleeves. And uh, I, I come along to <laughs> to help open this thing. Okay. Uh, Use your wood powers, Kyrio. <laughs> well, with it being yes, a the wood power of a crowbar that I produce <laughs> uh, uh, to try and force it open. Okay, so you you want to uh, also roll an athletics check? Very well. Uh, yes. Let me just have a look at what this is going to be now. Oh, nice. Uh, why am I not seeing? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. With the uh, with the twenty five, uh, the the door is uh, more difficult to open because as as well as uh, Julio breaking the handle off the door. Uh, Managed to wedge it in slightly, so it's it takes a little bit of effort, but uh, but yeah, with with the crowbar, you find the right spot, you heave, and yes, you pop the door open, uh, and you're able to push it over the uh, uh, over the the sand strewn uh, cargo floor deck. Uh, you're jamming and stuttering as you do so, but yes, you you open it up to, into into the room. Uh, Curio, roll me a uh, another uh, a perception check, please, just so uh, to see what you see in this dark space. Do you have? Does Curio have dark vision? Because currently the only light source is behind no. him outside. Okay. Yeah. So well, I'm a, a regular has light sword. Yeah, but he's but Julio is behind Curio. It's not a big door. Uh, <laughs> so and uh, Curio's a big man, so yeah, he'd be casting a big shadow. Uh, so the sixteen, okay. So. Uh, you uh, you see there is a a space here. Uh, it's with a sixteen. It's Still difficult to make out any detail. Uh, unlike uh, the ship that you sailed on, there are no windows into this space. This uh, you can see by the door, which is by the door frame, which is illuminated by Julio's sword. There is a place for a lantern to hang. This this would normally be uh, being uh, illuminated artificially. So you can see that there is a space here. There is a table. Uh, and chair on one side. Uh, there is uh, there appears some dark forms, uh, roughly rectangular. That's about all uh, Curio can make out at this time. Uh, let's go back to uh, back to Hector. See if uh, Hector's been taking a load off while uh, while Julio and. Uh, Curio has been inspecting inside and Willie's been wondering what's Hector been doing while he's been taking a load off. Alright. Um yeah, I think Hector would kinda of get up and uh step over and probably like put a hand out to Julio to help him stand back up. Um after the uh Yeah, you came when the crashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh well, you know, just kinda of go over and sit him back up. And then, um, I guess uh, Hector would just kind of call out to Curio, since Curio's uh, uh, in the room mostly, or at least at the door. Um, have you found anything uh, interesting? Uh, not particularly, but I can't see very well either, so mm -hmm. maybe, uh, maybe come have a check. Yeah. Um... I said, Hector would ask, uh, mind if I borrow that? And kind of like put a hand out towards 
Julia the uh, light sword. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll pass you this right uh, um, yeah, and so I guess uh, Hector, not really used to wielding rapiers, so kind of like hold it out more like a torch rather than like a weapon. Um, and kind of like a step forward, adding some more light to the area, uh, and taking a peek inside to see if I can. Even if, uh, even if it's like finding anything special, but more like maybe identifying what the room might have been. So if it, you know, if it deserves like a, a thorough like time search where we spend like thirty minutes or something, an hour, like really going through it. Okay. Uh, in that case, Hector, uh, roll me a perception check. Uh, yeah, you 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 do light up the room. Uh, there are shadows dancing around the place. Let's see what Hector can see. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah. Uh, don't maybe it's the the adrenaline is still pumping, and uh, Hector's got that slight uh, exertion tremor in his arm, and you know the sword is sort of pulsing and, and, and you know in in movement, and with that the shadows. A shifting here and there you can tell that this that about all you can tell at the moment is this seems to be uh it's the only room on the ship the the, the rest of it is cargo hold and top deck okay so it, it, it is a different space um, hmm. than the rest of the ship i'd say like a <laughs> We could probably take things out one at a time and carefully kind of comb through it all. Um, spend time, you know, like a, maybe like a, an hour here, right? Seeing if this room has any anything special. Um, does that sound about? Is that? I'll kind of you know like look around and see if anybody else, uh, what what others might feel about that. It's a yeah, time investment, but maybe you know taking it slow one at a time. You know, one item at a time might uh, might benefit us to finding out you know, um, how long this may have happened, what's going on. Can I take a guess at what the function of this room might have been? Uh, you, yeah, uh, Curio is uh, welcome to make a, a suggestion on what he thinks it could have been. Um, well, I mean, I guess... I don't know, but Curio would. <laughs> oh right, I, I see. I, I don't. See. I don't know what to say. Uh, okay, uh, roll me uh, the your your ship law crafting thing. Uh, okay. It'll be a low DC because he does know ships quite well. Oh well. Nice. <laughs> Uh, Key moments. <laughs> Today is the day we show up. <laughs> while uh, while you can't make out the the details of what the room contains, uh, Curio, you know that this is uh, likely where the captain uh, conducted the ship's business from. Uh, you know, this would probably be his quarters and his office. It would also be where any important items or documents would be kept separate to the rest of the cargo as uh, as it's the only really securable space on the uh, on the boat and and it would have been it would be more or less under his watch at all times except when he was on deck maybe you know okay uh, commanding the ship so, so with uh, that, if there so is yeah, going to be anything if, uh... interesting it is going to be in that room. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, relating to the others, uh, if uh, if the ship was run anything like a typical ship, this would be the captain's quarters. So, mm -hmm. um, if we find what anything, would you expect to be it, there. Uh, well, anything related to the captain, uh, we might even learn what this who this ship was, where it came from. 
Um, so it might be worth uh, worth spending some time going through it, as uh, as Hector suggested. Yep. What I will also if say, if we're going to find anything special in here, it will be in this room. What What I will also say with uh, with you that knowledge check, uh, something that you weren't looking for, but now you think about it is a little bit odd. Uh, there are two large masses on the deck that you can, from from your position below that top deck, you can just about make up that uh, are covered in sailcloth. Uh, something's odd about it, and uh, something strikes you as odd about about hmm. what what those could be. So yes, you've got that for the uh, for the ships uh, for, the, for the captain's space at the back, and there's something you wouldn't expect to see on a ship of this size on the deck. You don't know what. Does anyone else think that's weird? Point up to the. I'm gonna direct you to them. To it's, the, uh... it's these areas yeah. here. Mm. <clears throat> We're gonna we're gonna take some time here. Maybe I can climb up there and give them a look while the rest of you, you know, kind of slowly go to the captain's quarters. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know where these are. But they seem uh, atypical of a, a ship this size. Right. I'll be careful then. So. Uh, yeah, I guess Hector would try to find. I guess this is a, you know, obviously a uh, a beached kind of messed up ship, but I guess Hector would do his best to kind of climb up and um, see if he could get to the top deck and take a look at these. Uh, yeah, there'll, there'll be plenty of handholds. And while, these two, right? Yeah, while uh, while Hector is uh, is making his, you know, find some handholds and just, just pulling himself up onto the top deck, uh, Willie, uh, is there anything you're particularly uh, interested in doing? at this point yeah they were saying to look in the captain quarters and look for things so I'm gonna just head over there and try to find anything else that might pop out to me okay does Willie have that vision specifically like papers or um he's just gonna cast light on his okay something and make the other one dim Okay. Right. Oh yeah, and I guess before climbing up, uh, Hector would obviously give Julia back the his, his sword, the weapon. Yeah. Okay. Let's have another run at this. <laughs> Willie, please roll me a perception check. But this, uh, you, yeah, you have the same light that that Hector did. Let's see how you do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I produce a, a small. Uh... A small log for Willie to cast light on, and then put it in the the torch hold. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, and, and with the nineteen, okay, and, and now you've got a stable light, uh, light source illuminating the cabin. Uh, yeah, you can see a bit more. There is clearly a desk. Uh, you can't see the. Sort of like the, the the working side of it is away from you, but uh, it was a working desk. There's no papers on the desk or on the shelves. There is uh, a an amount of damp paper and detritus uh, around uh, on the floor. Uh, you you may be able to recover some of this if if you want to gather. Gather some of these up and uh, and dry them out. But at the moment, they're pretty much just stuck together. You know how paper gets if you if it gets wet and you you, you know if you start pulling it apart, it, it begins to tear. But there there is uh, there are some documents uh, some documents there. There is a uh, a chest with a lock on it uh, underneath where uh, two hooks where there's a, some tattered cloth hanging from from the hooks it appears that that was probably the captain's hammock uh and 
apart from that it's it's they it's you know shredded cloth broken uh broken items like cups and glasses and bottles is there's not a not a lot else to that, that survived the storm and possibly the uh the hags uh i don't know because the door was shut uh yes yeah, it'll be the the storm's uh attention okay so i'm gonna point out the desk to i guess polio and um curio kind of rhymes um I guess then lay the papers out. Can I try to cast prestidigitation to tidy one of the papers? I don't know if it will actually do anything or just make the... a small portion of the page. Yeah. I don't know if it will just erase the ink or not. Let me just... Uh... It says you can tidy. Yeah. It's, uh... yeah, but I don't know if like ink is considered dirty either. Uh... No, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it, it would... I don't know. <laughs> Don't think it would uh, do that, but uh, what does it does it dry? Make so negligible bulk tidy clean. Yeah, uh, clean or soil an object. So we'll say the uh, the the dampness and the uh, the the grit of the sand. You clean that off the paperwork, uh, and you have. It's not soaking. It's it's not wet anymore. It's it's just damp. It's got a uh, a bit more to it. Uh, these are the ship's documents, and they include uh, some details of uh, the the ship's manifest. Uh, if you roll, just roll a flat D twenty. Yeah, take ten minutes or so to kind of look through it all. Yeah, just roll me a flat D twenty, and we'll we'll get an idea for how much you can actually gain from this okay. 11 okay uh, this uh, strangely enough uh, this this ship appeared to be carrying a cargo of barrels of rum uh, who'd have thought from uh, Verana and it was uh, it was actually heading to uh, the south coast of Locke uh, to fulfil its trade uh, its trade contract as well as the as well as that it was also taking a few items of mail and, and there's some uh, within what you've got there's some personal messages uh, to various different uh, different places in let me just dig up the uh dig up the map to work out where the places are okay. just forget. did I get any more about like the more of the who or the just what or where from either lower alcohol or lower notable pirates uh, for the who just bear with me because I do have this uh, yeah I've just got to open the right document. Just bear with me. Let me find what this name is. Okay, so the ship was called the Badsworth. Uh, you haven't got you. You can't find the name uh, of the captain or any notables, and the uh, the addresses on the documents are pretty much uh, destroyed. You 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 can open open some. Uh, Open some of the envelopes and glean that this it's it's mainly personal messages. It's small uh, business inquiries uh, from the, uh, the the port of Varana to uh, the the destination uh, the destination port where the ship was going to drop the mail. Although you can't tell which of the various ports on on this ship's 
journey that was going to be. Uh, the there is a uh, uh, there is note of a special courier package on the on the manifest. And um, yeah, that's about all you get with eleven. Yeah, okay. Um, I told um, Turio and um, Julia that the desk appeared to be backward or something. I don't know if that was the internal. Yeah, yeah. What 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 I was getting? What, desk, what or... I was getting? If if somebody was sat at the desk, you. Uh, as you're looking into the room, okay. they would be facing you. So the working side of the desk is on the other side. If you think of how a desk works, you know, you think about you know the desk yeah. desk furniture. You know, you're just seeing some some flat panels and and you know and an opening. Mm. You know the uh, there may be more on the other side. Okay. I point that out to Curio and um, Julio. Mm. Uh, so Julio, uh, what what is what is Julio doing with that information? I uh, thinks that that is the correct way to orient a desk. <laughs> so he has no problem with it. You gotta face the door in case anyone comes in. So always about being prepared. Nice. Okay. Uh, so should we uh, scavenge around outside, see if we can find any more barrels of rum? Ah, okay. Uh, Julio, you look for... You do a perception check and see if you can find any whole barrels of rum. Eighteen. Let's see what that gets you. That gets you. Uh, that gets you a little bit more than some barrels of rum. Uh, you, while searching through the hold uh, over the course of an hour, while the other three are searching the ship a bit more, you're looking through the hold, through the barrels outside, uh, through the debris. You find. Uh, four intact barrels of rum uh, you find uh, two additional uh, two cases of ballista ammunition which uh, will hold 20 shots in total and you find a small chest uh, would you like to open that chest Absolutely. Okay. Uh, don't worry. There's no no traps. Uh, you open uh, this small uh, small chest, and uh, with its size being small, it seems to be a bit more robust. Uh, and you find five basic health potions uh, within that chest. Uh, but I'd say oh all that searching Lord. has taken uh, has taken the whole of the this hour that Hector suggested earlier. Yeah, I've kind of... Let's say I rolled everything into a pile kind of over here. And I'll put the health potions just in my inventory. Yep, I'll uh, just remind me, I'll drag those through uh, in a little bit. Uh, so, you've been doing that search. Uh, let's go to... Uh, just trying to think. Curio, you were helping Willy a little bit with the search, weren't you? With a bit of wood. So let's, uh, yeah, let's go go to Hector. So Hector, you've uh, you've got up onto the deck, uh, and I'm not going to make you roll anything for the state of the deck. The, the deck is pretty rough, uh, uh, a little bit splintered in places. This ship's this ship's been through uh, been through some drama. Uh, yeah, you uh, make your way up to uh, to the pile of cloth, uh, and you see it appears to be 
the remains of uh, the sails when they eventually were shredded and ripped from the rigging they've caught on uh, what appears to be a some kind of uh, wooden frame uh, with somewhat of a familiar appearance a familiar shape although you can't quite place it with the uh, the sailcloth uh, obscuring it I don't know uh, yeah, I think um, I'd just get up to it. Um, if it seemed like the sailcloth was caught on anything, I think Hector would just kind of like use the the blade portion of the uh, the falcata to kind of like slowly cut through. Um, and uh, yeah, eventually, uh, since we're going to be here about an hour, right? Like take mm -hmm. the time to slowly kind of peel away the uh, sails to get like a full picture of what the this item might mm -hmm. be. And I guess if it's like... If I could do both within that time period, like thirty minutes on each. Yeah, yeah, I'd say you you just it's literally cutting cloth and just walking between the two. Yeah, you uh, on the you approach the first one and uh, you don't notice it snagging. You cut. You don't have to be too careful. It's uh, the you know the, whatever's underneath this seems fairly sturdy, uh, and you uncover what appears to be a fairly serviceable ballista, similar to the one that you already have on your ship. Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, this, you know, this is obviously good news. Uh, you, you can use this. Uh, you go over and uncover the other one and you find uh, a, you find a very similar, uh, similar weapon there and they've been placed so that they can provide uh, fire from both sides of the ship, but also cover forward and rear as well. Uh, they're making the most of what they can of, of what uh, of what little weaponry this a ship of this size could could uh, support. So yeah, you uh, you have discovered mm. two usable ballistas. Uh, nice. Okay. Um, so I think at some point I would like call this <clears throat> out um, because you said it was this was strange, right? Like. Um, there was something peculiar about this. So I think I'd call out to... Um, I think Kyria was the one who said it would have been strange. Mm. Um, and then, like, you know, get his opinion on um, if the ballista are, like, natural or... Uh, not natural, but, like, uh, if the ballista mm. indicates something else, I guess. Now that we've uncovered what's here. Um uh, Curio, yeah. without without having to roll, uh, you have seen plenty of ships of this size enter har enter the harbours where you worked, enter your shop. Uh, you have never seen this kind of weaponry on such a small vessel. Not you know, especially having two weapons of this kind. This is this is a small cargo runner. It's a, uh, a or, or possibly uh, the, the, a, a vessel this size will be. A fishing vessel, uh, you know what? It, it's it. While you know a paranoid owner might have need for weaponry such as this, there isn't really the size of the ship to support it in terms of uh, if if it fires while it's on the wrong tack, it could literally capsize the ship. This was a a risky uh, a risky uh, piece of equipment to to be carrying if the intention was to use it, and that is why this is unusual. Yeah, so... Uh, I've, uh... Never seen such a heavily armed small ship. Uh, <laughs> these, uh, these ballistas aren't made to be used on anything nearly this small. Like... Uh... The, the barely fit on our ship. Uh, these might even be part of the reason this ship uh, got so easily uh, thrown about in the storm. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Makes you wonder what what the goal was here. But either way, I think we could probably uh, remove him from the ship and refit him on ours. So. Um, might be in our best interest to uh, maybe alert the other ship hands that are, you know, like 
Because all of this stuff is going to take more than just us four, right? Um, and it might even take several trips to get it all ready to uh, back on the uh, the beach where we landed. So. And these ballistas are in strangely good condition considering the rest of the ship. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that as well, but I no way somebody added this after the fact, right? Like this is. Um, does it look that? Really I, guess, I guess that's the question. Does it look that new? Like, does it look like somebody added this after the ship crashed, or does it look like it's always been part of the ship? No, no. This this looks like it was. Uh, it doesn't look like it's been tampered with. It's. Uh, it it could be that the. Uh, the the sails wrapping around the framework had, had actually deflected uh, the worst of the weather while it's been there, but they are on the top deck. The okay, uh, if if you look, the top deck is pretty much whole. Uh, the the damage has been done to the hull rather than the deck itself. So it's it you know the the winds ripped the sails and the rigging and blew the ship into the rocks, but uh, the 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 actual deck isn't too bad uh, and it's it is a piece okay. of war right. machinery it, then, it, it, war machinery is it is built to be rugged probably more rugged than the ships that it's mounted on fair enough okay yeah i just want to make sure it wasn't like a, obviously like somebody's been trying to maybe attempt you know like an attempt to rebuild the ship or something after the fact so but if it looks like it came from it directly then um yeah, so then I guess uh, we need to take our time and get this all done. Okay. Uh, so Hector's been taking a very careful study of the uh, of the two items on the ship's deck and discovered that the blisters. Julio has been uh, searching the barrels and uncovered uh, some barrels and uh, a couple of crates uh, of things as well uh, uh, Willie and Curio uh, do you want to take this time to do anything do you want to start bringing uh, some of the stuff out of the uh, cabin at the back out into the light so it can be inspected more carefully perhaps yeah yeah, helping, uh, helping empty the room. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'm just talking about this desk too much, but if I look around the other side, are there like locked doors or anything like that? Uh, there are. Uh, there are two. No, go ahead. There are two drawers in the desk. Wait, cupboards. No, there there are two drawers. Uh, the. Uh, or have I opened them? Uh, no, you haven't opened them. But the uh, the top drawer, uh, you open it and it's got uh, various things. It's got uh, a, a small pen knife, a uh, a corkscrew. Uh, it's got uh, a few uh, odds and ends. You know, uh, bits of rope. You know, some something. Uh, there's a, a piece of wood in there that looks like it was in. The process of being carved into into something, you know, somebody was whittling it. The there's nothing of consequence there. Uh, the second drawer is locked. Carry hmm. uh, you know how to open a locked door? Uh, not particularly. I can try and force it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? What's the worst that's gonna happen? Uh, okay. The worst that can happen is that the contents inside get destroyed, but we're not thinking yeah. that far ahead. Well, then, Curio. Do you how to do that? <laughs> so, you are still holding your crowbar from before. Uh, I guess I'll start, I'll start trying to force it open. Okay, roll me an um, <laughs> athletics <laughs> check, please. I use it on a. Use it on a wee, uh, a wee drawer. Let's go. That'll do. Yeah, with a with a twenty-one. Yeah, you uh, 
you find enough of a gap uh, between the drawer that is unlocked and and, and the drawer be, uh, the drawer below to get behind. And you don't just pop the drawer. You 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 take out the piece of wood that the drawer was locking against, and yeah, you crack it and uh, and open uh, the drawer pops open. Uh, Curio, you are stood there now. You are able to open the drawer, and there is within this drawer a uh, a leather pouch, uh, and it's the only thing in this drawer. And uh, you is the the you still got the lights on. This this leather pouch, uh, it's not like a uh, a money pouch or, or something like that. It's more like a. Uh, a sort of leather flat satchel with the flap has been folded over uh and uh bound with uh with uh leather lace uh you know tied off with you know le leather string and the uh the loose flap part has been sealed with wax this this appears to have been uh very carefully prepared Is is there anything on the uh, on the outside? Uh, any writing or inscriptions or motives? Uh, let me just please let me just double check my notes on this before I spin you a yarn. Uh, no, no, the outside is uh, is it's plain leather, uh, but. Uh, uh, as I've described, the okay. the unusual thing about this is it's there's a lot of there seems to be a lot of care has gone into this to uh, ensure water cannot uh, damage the contents. I, uh, I treat it very carefully. Uh, I suggest uh, to Willie that we uh, that we open this with the others. All right, let's bring it outside. Could be interesting. I like try to shake the other drawer out of the cabinet too to bring that out too. Yeah, you can uh, by all means you can. Oh, yeah, like take the whole drawer. Pull the drawer. Yeah, one. <laughs> hey, just kind of slow it back and forth a little bit. Uh, very well. And um, so at this point, uh, you've pretty much such the whole ship uh you meet outside julio is at the back uh looking at the pile of spoils that uh, he's dragged together hector is taking uh uh paying uh inspecting these these war machines that uh that he's uncovered on the deck and uh probably working through his head how they can be transported to your vessel uh and curio uh and Willie, you've brought the the, ch the chest out, which uh, is also locked, and uh, you have uh, despoiled the desk to the uh, in order to get the contents from the drawers, and you bring forth a empty, uh, a more or less uh, a mostly empty drawer with some knickknacks on, and this this pouch out into the daylight. Uh, what would you all like to do? We'll go with Julio first because it's been a while since we've uh, we've been with Julio. Uh, sure, I mean he'd probably call the attention of some other people to let me know about all of the shit that he's found. Very nice, very nice. No, uh, no food or anything, but definitely at least people to drink ourselves to death. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Worst comes to worst, you know. All this I hope, yeah, I hope you guys are making note of all this stuff that uh, that you're building up because this is your your ship plunder, by the way, and you you can make money from this later. Uh, I'm gonna drag some potions into uh, Julio's. Uh -huh. Go on, somebody else uh, call out. Uh, 
rolling rolling these back with me we'll get the rest of the crew to come help yeah yeah i think uh i think hector's strong enough maybe to take like a hmm is hector strong enough to take two barrels i Uh, I mean, you could probably away. carry. You could do one barrel and probably the ammunition <laughs> on your back. I got a, I got a plus four on my strength. Let me just. So I, don't, I don't know if that. Like, uh, so maybe I could like shoulder, like, like shoulder one and one. You know, mm. <laughs> fully commit you to that. Your sector's insane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just. Roll a. I'm just trying to think. What's what? What do you reckon is the closest to a straight intelligence check? That we can uh, do? closest to like a straight intelligence check. Yeah. Hmm. Well, um. What, what you're thinking the check is for? Yeah, is, I wonder. Um, it, if it's intel. Maybe what if it's? I guess could I make an athletics check to see if I feel confident enough that I'm strong enough to carry two? Uh, you could. It's just that you've, you've, you've already in character uh, or sort of out of character for your character mentioned something that is a better idea than what you've got planned. And I'm just trying to work out if, if it Oh, yeah, like go mind. get the others. Yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, pretty that's much. Just roll one back and then... Yeah, you've, you've, got, you've got two large, right, large right. ballistas yeah, to move uh, and a load of gear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. huh. Okay. Well, no, I was thinking like for some reason, I guess like maybe the the barrels are bigger than I thought. Like mentally, I was thinking like smaller kind of like keg barrels. But I guess if it's much, like, if they're like really large ones, then I would just take one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean at the end of the day, this was a trade. Yeah. Mission. So I'll take one this, uh, yeah. and head on back. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then I'll, I'll take one and I'll head back with the others. Uh, head back with Jula to. Um, get the others and bring them, you know, so we can start moving all this stuff. Uh, uh, is the whole party moving back to the uh, the beach where the small boat landed, or uh, is anybody remaining behind? Um, that's a good question. Well, do do we want to to open this um, pouch with uh, before before we start going? Probably should. Yeah. Uh, I call Hector and Julie over before they uh before they start heading on back. What's up? Yeah, I found this um, leather pouch. Uh, the captain seems to have gone to great lengths uh, to make sure that the contents uh, stayed dry. So, I figured this would be. This is probably the most interesting thing we're going to find. I mean, why don't you just open it? Oh, yeah. Right. Let's see what it is. I don't be. care about leather pouch, I care what's in it. Alright, well. I'll start opening it. What what do we find inside? Okay. Uh inside you find uh a uh a couple of documents uh bound uh together they are folded and they are tied with string. Uh you know, folded up like an envelope but it's the actual document itself. And where the folds come together there is a wax seal uh, on each of these documents. And Julio, while the specific seal is not familiar, there are crests on it that you recognize. And this is a seal that has come from uh, Dukan Admiralty. Uh, this indicates that this so is. Been, uh... This it indicates that this is a uh, a communication uh, from a ship 
within the Dukan or f what was formerly the Dukan Navy. Yeah, it looks like uh, we've got some sort of message from the Navy. Probably not important now, considering the country's fucking destroyed, but uh, could have some useful information in it. Yeah. Crack the seal, you know? Let's have a look. Okay. So, who can read uh, Dukane stroke Dukanese? Is it just Julia? Uh, I think all of us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I definitely picked uh, Dukanese as the uh, the language as well. Okay, yeah. right. Uh, here is not specifically from Dukan, so he just hands it to. Uh, but it's the it's the trade. The Hector to read. The. Uh, I'll take this one, and you you read the one of the others, right? Between the two documents uh you gather that uh this is a fleet movement instruction uh piecing together uh the information on on both documents it it appears that uh multiple courier ships have been dispatched to ensure that this instruction reaches the fleet of uh, admiral uh, denyon uh, fuseld who is stationed off the north coast of calor his fleet is instructed to move west uh, across the uh, abyssal ocean, wreck on there, uh, to uh, corral <laughs> and engage a long-standing threat. They will be joined in this by two other fleets that will converge in the sea between Loch and Varana, trapping their quarry there. That this is a seek and destroy mission. Uh, the uh, further instructions go on. The fleets uh, fleets involved are instructed to engage, seize, or destroy any vessels they encounter that are not allied to Old Dukan, New Dukan, Visgrad, the Floating Crown, or any of the Allied fleets in the operating in the region. Mm. Okay. I think uh, with reading this and kind of like starting to piece this together, uh, I think uh, Hector gets pretty serious, right? Like, you know, kind of recognizing the uh, threat for what it is, right? Um, yeah. So uh, I think uh, Hector would just kind of like let out this like you know long kind of sigh you know like <sighs> like I said sailing around these parts is uh, going to get quite difficult although is there a date attached to any of this because it is coming from a wrecked ship so maybe hmm uh, no no there's do, uh... do we have any timeline on I'd say I'd say no, you don't. There, it, it is it is a uh, an instruction, uh, and you you gather there were multiple uh, copies of this dispatch sent, uh, probably on multiple you know, more than one ship. Uh, it is worded vaguely enough that it may not mean anything to many people uh, on its own, and. Uh, the idea was uh, the impression you get is it's you know once this instruction was received it was to be acted on uh, the dates are immaterial uh, I would say you are canny enough to <laughs> consider that this instruction may have already reached its destination from another source or from another route should I say yeah I guess yeah, I was I was also thinking like um if this is something that is I guess uh, I was thinking like is this something still happening, right? Like is this something does this ship look wrecked enough that like um it's been a long time past or does it look like uh this might be something 
that is currently happening in the area which we're currently sailing in, right? Like that's where we're that's basically where we're at. Um, so we might get caught up in this trap. Is what Hector's thinking? I so I guess uh, I would ask uh, Curio specifically, <clears throat> right? Like you know, uh, like I know it's not easy, but is there any way you can identify roll how long this ship has been here specifically? If you can right. roll your ship crafting check for me, please, Curio. Are there names on it for the captain. Uh, what? On on what on the on the the document that uh, on the document Hector, is there like a specific name of it? It, uh, it actually mentioned yeah. Admiral Just the one, right? Denyon uh, full sailed uh, as the as the main fleet that this was destined for. Uh, Twenty one. Okay, uh, Curio, yeah. you you, uh, you look this. Uh, there is a build-up of sand within the hull, but you know this ship only made it this far because it was washed up in, in a pretty hefty storm. You look at the damage. Uh, the wood isn't rotting. Uh, it seems fairly freshly splintered. It's still got that uh, that uh, fresh yellow look that broken broken wood does uh, underneath the. Uh, the the aged patina that uh, that it generally uh, gathers. Uh, so with a twenty one, uh, yeah, I'd I'd say you you'd probably put this ship being here no more than uh, nine days. Oh, so it's okay. That's a really fresh, hmm. nice. Oh, mo moderately fresh. Okay. It's probably, you know, it's probably been there, you know, be between a week and two weeks. Yeah. So from from the the state of the the wood, uh, scratching a bit at the top and seeing how fresh it still is underneath it, it's probably been here uh, at most two weeks. Mm. Yeah. So the contents of this. Uh these messages has uh, almost surely reached their intended target but also that means that the uh, our area of operation right where we're sailing currently is uh, going to be getting uh, considerably more populated in the you know if not already right coming days so Maybe this is something that, once we get all the supplies back, uh, we should run this across uh, Captain and get his take on how we proceed forward. Because we could very, we could very likely get you know crushed between these uh, these fleets that are moving into the area, and you know we are one ship against you know, a fleet. Or, or it was three fleets total, right? So it was one, and then it was two others? Yes. Just to be sure. Okay, so three fleets total in the air. Yeah, so that's a lot, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, with this, you've... Uh picked apart this you picked apart the uh the docket of information uh i'm assuming you uh just put it all back together uh close it up and uh put it away to take with you are you moving back to uh your origin on the island to uh sort of muster the the crew to come and salvage the large items on this vessel or uh, have you got anything else that you would like to do here? Yeah, I'd say... I'll just salvage it. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Hector is like a almost like a nervous energy now, right? Like, yeah. you know, like we gotta get we gotta be fast now, right? Um, whereas previously he might not have like you know he might have been more taking it easy, but coming across this information, right? This is something that we need to kind of like we need to speak to the captain about sort of situation. Right. Yep, exactly. That's how Hector views it. I don't know it about the, the rest way. of you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, and with that, you uh, you all gather together the uh, any small items that you would like to take, uh, and uh, you move back to the back to the origin point. So let's drag everybody here. Uh, are you back at the sandy beach on your screens? Yep. Uh, yep. 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 Oh, okay. Yep. Very good. All right. Uh, Any chance to have a list of the smaller drawer contents? <laughs> yes. There. Uh, now you've got it out if in. Not, in I can remember. Now you've got it out in the in the light. Uh, there is a corkscrew, a pen knife, and if you you know after the session, I'll uh, I'll remind me of this list and I'll uh, I'll add it into uh, Willie's inventory. A okay. Uh, put it all in my bag. Uh, a few bits of uh, knotted rope that seem a bizarre thing to to keep for a captain to store, uh, and a piece of wood uh, being whittled into a uh, uh, half finished figurine of some sort. Uh, the the detail isn't quite there to to make out. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as a as a group, you uh, move away from the beach. You've taken the small items, Julio. You've uh, taken the uh, small potion bottles uh, yourself. Uh, whether you intend to keep them or distribute them later, that's entirely your choice. Uh, Willie, you have gathered these small items from the drawer. And uh, one of you is carrying the the docket. The the larger items you've left uh, in a pile, uh, well, in grouped together for your your deck hands to uh, to bring back to the ship later. Uh, you move back across the beach, uh, walking the length back to where uh, the small boat originally was, which has been returned with the two deck hands that have taken all the timber and. Uh, uh, bits of rope and various things that had been found earlier on. Uh, they are already loading the boat uh, with the things that Finn and I've got to remember. I think Finn and which was the other one? The two uh, Finn and Layla uh, had already brought down to the beach, uh, and. Uh, that's where we are. Uh, Finn and Layla haven't yet returned from their uh, second trip yet, but the uh, the the boat is being loaded for for another trip back to back to your ship. Uh, what would you like to do? Well, the... well, I think we're gonna go talk to the captain. Yeah, I think. While, we're... while the crew's doing all this stuff. Yeah, I think we'd inform him. Like, hey. You know, essentially tell them where to go um, and to get that stuff ready while we take whatever's loaded currently um, and head back. Right. Okay. Uh, are you are you all going back to the uh, back to the ship, or is anybody going to sort of stay on shore and uh, pass? Uh, instructions to the crew or anything like that. I'll, I'll stay on the shore. Uh, I also remark at some point that the other two are still are still at large. Um, you know the I'll two of you. Hmm? Ah. I'll stay with you as well. Okay, so okay, two stays to uh, two stay to go. Mm. There we go. We're splitting the party. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. Uh, there it is. So, uh, we will we will move with uh, Julio and Hector for now, uh, who have taken the uh, the pouch of uh, documents with them, uh, and will take the ship with uh, Jim and Caitlin. 
uh, take the small boat with uh, with the supplies that they've they've already loaded while you have been walking up the beach, uh, and you head back to back to the ship where Sal and the rest of the crew are uh, effectively waiting uh, for your return. Uh, you the there is no uh, no drama in it's a nice still sheltered bay. There, there is you know the waves are just lapping gently. You make your way to the uh, ship with no events, uh, and yes, you uh, you drop alongside the ship in the small boat. The two of you board the ship while the deck uh, the deck hands on board help tight and start unloading the foodstuffs uh, that have been brought over while you two board the deck. Uh, are you heading straight to the captain's quarters? Or would you like to yeah. do something else? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we're... Okay. But definitely captain's quarters. Oh, you move around the upper deck uh, to the rear of the boat and uh, head to... Uh, and, and you you find yourself in front of the, the captain's quarters door. Uh, it is closed. Uh, do you knock? Do you just go in? What, what would you like to do? Yeah. Julia's going to knock. Julia's going to knock. Okay. Uh, loud rap from inside. The captain's uh, voice comes back with uh, a bit of a snort and a... Uh, 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 come in! Come in! Come in! And, uh, yeah, he ushers you to enter his cabin. The door is unlocked. All right. Yeah, we... we... Head in. Okay, so uh, as you head in, uh, Sal is sat uh, in his chair uh, beh- uh, behind the desk that is in uh, in his quarters. Uh, he sits up uh, somewhat abruptly. He's he looks a bit bored. Uh, he's not had much to do here. He's not the usual. Uh, bustling crew of his former ship. He's uh, he's effectively been been forced to just wait on you. He says, "Ah, so what have you found? Uh, we are we fit to sail? Are we provisioned? We we will be, but we've got graver news than that. I'm afraid. News? Is this this? Yeah, have you just kind of like acts like a a support? Yeah. Just... This this Nodding. this is a supply run. What what news? Did you did you stub your toe? Was it the coconuts? Did did you did you lose one of one of my crew to coconuts, Julio? No, uh, we we found a, a shipwreck actually. Oh. Uh, a, uh, destroyed, uh, likely Dukanese ship, in fact. Uh, mm. and do you have uh, Hector procure the letter and just kind of present the information if you just read this it should explain everything uh, and you uh, Sal will take the, the pouch and remove it and he'll note the uh, seal that's, you, you, when you opened it you didn't break the seal uh, up as such you just separate it from the paper seal make a note of the seal and go hmm oh we've seen these before and he'll open the uh, spread the papers out and and read uh, read the word and go this is uh, yeah this is this is this is interesting and and concerning uh, hmm I wonder wonder what this target is. I wonder I wonder if this is a target worthy of the thirteenth. Hmm. This could be an opportunity. They seek they seek to corral it between the, in the the channel between Vrana and Locke, we 
we already have ships there. We could, we ourselves could chase this target down. What do you think? What if? I think uh, Hector's gonna like speak up. Um, is there any chance that the Thirteenth Fleet is the target of something like this? And with that, uh... if we already have ships there, maybe they are aware. Sal will just look at you for a moment, Hector, and just sort of a puzzled frown on his face, and and his eyes will go wide and go, "Damn it, that's." That's every bit of the possibility. This this could be a trap for us. We we the the admiral's ship and the Betty are well. The Betty is sailing that way now. We we have to warn them. How long have you said we have ships there now? Currently, uh, how long have we had ships there? Have they been there for some time? Well, the admiral's the admiral's ship controls our biggest squadron, uh, so it makes sense to keep it where uh, where it can can catch the most fish, as it were. That is a that is a busily trafficked channel. Uh, it it probably has it undoubtedly has not gone unnoticed that uh, that we have we have an operation going in in that area of the sea, and damn, I mean we we are there to trap ships and take them. It it it's the perfect it's the perfect bottleneck. We uh, we must leave as soon as possible. Where where's the rest of the crew? Is this all that yeah, you so found? Yes, our fleet is. So our fleet is. Right. Uh, what I uh, will they're do. They're loading up the supplies right now. Uh, they're loading up the supplies. But is this all you found? Uh, is it? Are we just waiting? Waiting on supplies? Uh, there's was, there's nothing uh... else. Well, we found. It's interesting that, uh, sorry, Trill. It's interesting that uh, it appears this was like a, a small transport ship. It wasn't meant to be part of the main fleet or anything like that. So, uh, it seems like they might be collecting every kind of ship, not just the naval variety. Uh, yeah. Well, and uh, one thing in particular about this uh, ship is the, uh, the fact that it had. Um, the uh, what was it? the the ballistas war machines right the the two ballista um, yeah two ballistas um, there's two of them on there they look uh, quite capable I've already removed them uh, we're getting the crew on land to uh, help transport them and get them ready to bring them onto ship as well so we'd have those available to us um, but yeah this the whole thing seemed out of sorts the the type of uh, weaponry that was on this ship is much too much too large for the uh, that the ship could handle, right? And potentially played a role in uh, the ship being uh, uh, destroyed, anyways, right? Losing its uh, control in the in the waters. Um, so maybe they're outfitting regular, you know, everyday kind of like island hopper ships. Or there's something else, right? They're using them to transport weapons and such. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, heading that way is probably wise, at least to give notice to the rest of the uh, the fleet. Hmm. Uh, these uh, this these weapons are they salvageable? We at present we we have. But one, uh, the squadrons that 
the 13th operates using ships this size we have at best a quarter uh, of, of the usual firepower uh, something like this would uh, would see in the service of the 13th they, they are we, we, we're, we're getting them loaded up Not yeah they're, sal they're salvageable we're getting them brought to the uh, the beachhead and from there to the ship but it will take a bit of time. Well, we can we can get them loaded. Uh, we can make we can make ready and and move out uh, before they're fitted. But uh, but salvaging salvaging them will 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 be worth the the small delay for for the added firepower this brings to our to our vessel, and it, it makes us more capable. It makes us more capable to see off. Anything that uh, that is coming our way, although fleets, the thirteenth, yeah, three the, fleets. That's the thirteenth is is at minimal strength. Uh, they need to know very well. Uh, Boson, yeah. uh, Hector, uh, I do what needs to be done. Let's you know, get the. Let's start getting this ship ready to sail uh, and get that, uh, get the equipment off the beach, onto this, uh, onto this deck in 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 short order. Uh, what are you still standing I, I, for, yeah. here for? Get out of my office! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's he's gonna <laughs> right. he, as you move, yeah. he's jump pulling, right on it. He's pulling charts yeah. out. He's starting. He's he's going to work. Uh, you you hear him call for the uh uh for the navigator uh uh to come come to his office uh as you as the door is opened and uh and yeah you you move away as you uh when you come out the uh the small boat is more or less unloaded and about to return to shore uh, are you staying on board the ship or are you returning to shore with it I mean, we're gonna get some work done. Help. Yeah, I think uh, Hector would return just to like be an, an additional like muscle as far as like getting all the ship back to the the beachhead and then onto the ship, right? So, uh, yeah. I think Hector's like full swing trying to help uh, and, carry. And Julia would pull off some of the crew that stayed on the uh, the ship as well to come help. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, and with that, uh, so Julio, you're staying on the ship, yes? No, he's well for a minute. He's just going to gather up a bunch of people. All right, so you you bring in a yeah, few more of the deckhands to the to the beach just to just to speed up this salvage operation. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yes. You. Uh, yeah. Exactly. You. Uh, you. You leave uh, Sal and two deckhands on the ship uh, just to deal with just just to be there they're not having to do much the ship's at anchor uh and you bring the remaining people over, which means that yeah, you have okay. a skeleton crew yeah you've got uh i believe that will put 13 people on the beach so yeah uh you've got uh, you all crowd into the small boat literally uh bodies uh down each side uh looking inwards to each other uh with two on the oars uh and one at the back on the tiller, uh, and yes, you you head back for the shore. Uh, while the small boat is returning, we'll head back to uh, Willie and uh, Curio. Uh, well, uh, one second. Oh, Can I try something? Um, go on. So, uh, want to do a master at arms thing here? Um, okay. Essentially, uh, yeah, like a. So essentially, a. Uh, so there's, I mean, uh, I guess it's more of like a flavor thing rather than like a mechanical thing, right? Because the Master at Arms has like the cat of nine tails and then like two lashes, right? Um, and essentially like what it does is like in combat, um, the two lashes basically like, uh, essentially you put the fear of them with a few sharp lashes. And then um, if they are ever like mess up, it uh, the negativity of it goes... Um, or no, sorry, the Cat of Nine Tails one. Sorry, I was reading the wrong one. Um, essentially, uh, 
anytime somebody does something successfully, uh, I turn my skills of persuasion to the highest possible level. And essentially, I will make any success a critical success. So, like, uh, what I'm doing in this moment is more flavor based, but uh, essentially kind of taking lead as the master at arms. Like, you know, it's like um, essentially inspire everybody uh, that's on the ships, like, really get like a hustle on with uh, moving uh, all of this forward and, like, you know, uh, knocking this out as quickly as possible because we are, you know, uh, it's a necessity, right? Like, the time, uh, it depends on it. Yeah, so. and, okay, and be so before you uh, uh, jump onto the small boat, you uh, exhort the crew in no uh, uncertain terms that their ass is grass if they don't pull the lead out and get this thing moving. The two remaining on the crew are to batten the ship down, get her ready to sail. Everybody in the boat, you, yeah. If you see anybody walking, uh, they'll feel the flat of your uh, uh, weapon on their backside. Uh, you know, everybody moves at a run. You are departing today, and yes, you uh, you make your your feelings quite clear. And as you are in the small boat now, you leave a visible white foam wake across the bay as they pull and pull with the guy on the tiller uh, sounding out with a sea shanty to uh, to help keep the rhythm of the of the rowing so yes uh, everybody is uh, on on top of that so we'll bear that in mind that when we come to do any persuasion checks Hector will get that bonus okay nice yeah, right. So uh, with the small boat heading back uh, to the shore, uh, Willie and Curio, uh, you have been uh, waiting at the beach uh, for the remaining two deckhands to show. And sure enough, uh, you see, uh, you see two uh, two figures in the distance, except. It's not two figures. Uh, roll a perception check, Willie. All right. Oh shit! Nice. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, there is clearly a third. Ah! <laughs> we are clutch today. We are clutch today. There is clearly a third figure. Uh, with the the two deckhands. Uh, however, uh, the deckhands aren't threatened. Uh, they they don't they're not running from the figure. Uh, they are walking alongside the figure. Uh, they have uh, various supplies with them. You know, again, there's uh, some uh, barrels of water uh, that they're uh, carrying under their arm, uh, or you assume it's water. You can just see the barrels. Uh, the figure, uh, figure themselves, uh, appears uh, a bit dishevelled. Uh, even from this distance, you can tell their clothing is uh, a, a little bit tattered. Uh, it's a scene. It's seen some weather staining. Uh, And yeah, the three figures, uh, the three figures approach. Uh, what would, uh, what would you like to do, Curio? Uh, what would you like to do? Do you greet them? Do you? Uh, point the third one out to him. So, will you uh, you point out the the third mm. figure to Curio? Okay. Uh, yeah, kind of ask him. You know who that. Is Curio, can you deserves only to went out? Uh, yeah, but Curio, could you describe uh, what what Curio and Willie see in this third figure, please? Uh, yeah, right there. <laughs> the, the this third figure is uh, a little shorter than. Uh, uh, than the average uh, person, you, you see some uh, glinting and shining uh, in the sun as he uh, 
approaches, uh, you realize that he's got um, small outcroppings of uh, uh, of steel sticking out of his skin at various points, uh, and hands hands of uh, well varnished steel at this point. Um, he's looking very, you know, dishevelled and nervous. Um, as he, uh, yeah, in the uh, in his uh, nervousness, uh, he can't help but uh, uh, grin and uh, show his uh, uh, shark-like uh, metal teeth uh, for everyone to see. Um, so he's he's looking a bit a bit sheepish, uh, rather happy to see uh other people but uh but yeah not not entirely sure yet which way things will go for him and uh finn and layla are walking up uh in conversation with him and they they see you uh back at the rendezvous point and give a wave and as you get closer we uh we while we were out uh Foraging and gathering supplies, uh, this, uh, this this person came, uh, came upon us. He's, he's he says he's been here for some time. Uh, we we thought it best to he he was so pleased to see us, but we we thought it best to bring him uh, here. We we wouldn't have left him with the supplies, but uh, on his own. But we uh, we thought it best to to bring it to to the uh, to to the officers to uh, to. To make a decision on on what we do with this uh, uh, this man, uh, uh, and they'll sort of hand uh, hand him off to uh, to Willie and uh, Kirio. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, uh, so we we're, we're just gonna we've got a few caches of supplies that we we move power. We're, we're just gonna bring everything down uh, ready for the ready for the next boat uh, boat coming in, uh, and 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 they head off. Uh, they head off back and and yes, uh, Willie and Curio, you're there. Uh, stood with this individual who's sort of looking at uh, looking. Well, he's sort of a beaming smile, I imagine, but uh, at the same time a little bit wary. Would would that uh, would that be accurate? Uh, is that what Curio is seeing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, a nervous uh, nervous grin. Okay, so Willie, uh, what what do you make of this? Um, I mean, find a random guy on an island. Do you just trust him right away? Probably not. Um, I'll kind of shout out to him. Um, so where did you? You said you were here for a while. Where'd you come from? Well, I don't. I don't believe he's uh, said uh, anything to you guys yet. He's just just had a description. But yeah, Curio. Uh, uh, or, or should I say? Uh, well, yeah, Callum. Just uh, respond to Willie's question, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've. Uh, <laughs> I've been stuck here for a while. Uh, why am I glad to see some living human beings? Um, yeah, uh, I, I think uh, I don't know how long you've been here, but I assume you found uh, <laughs> my my old ship. Um, yeah, um, as far as I know, I'm uh, the <laughs> the only survivor. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, who are you? <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm Willie and this is, this is Curio. Um, this is your ship. Uh, uh, it's not my, my, my ship, uh, the... The ship I was on, um, yes, um, 
uh, I believe I should introduce myself. Um, I usually refer to as a Sharky, as a, as may be obvious. I give you a, a toothy grin. Um, so I take a little step back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I understand. <laughs> that's uh, that's happened a lot. Uh, I don't bite. Not unless uh, you get on my nerves. Um, that's good. Um, were you part of the? Well, I guess what brought you to this island then, Mister? Um, uh, a storm mostly. <laughs> I uh, never, uh, never really intended to spend much time here. Never knew this island existed, and uh, pretty uh, keen to get off of it. Hmm. I guess with that destruction, no one really intends to do that anyway. Um, well, we can bring you to the captain at some point, but, I mean, first we need to get all this stuff, and he kind of points to some of the barrels and the ballista back to back to our ship. Uh, I think you could uh, help us with that, maybe, Sharky? Uh, I can... I've not had a proper meal in a while, but I can, uh, I can certainly try. Oh well, we can we can help you with that a little bit. Um, kind of pull some rations out and kind of hand them over to him. Uh, my eyes widen as a uh, I've uh, I've had nothing but fruit for for over a week now. <laughs> yeah, anything good? Uh, bananas, coconuts, uh, the odd root. We do need some um, Do you know where any more bananas are? Oh well. I don't know. Do I know what bananas are? What what other fruit is there on this? Well, any any side? more from like where you have found them in the. Ah, uh, um, I, I would I say can, I would I can say that show you, you where the uh, yeah they, they <laughs> where are the trees were they are further inland. Uh, you would have to move into into the jungle. Who knows the uh, the other the 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 deckhands may have uh, may have discovered such uh, wonderful items as uh, pineapples and uh, and melons and and. And bananas, but uh, we'll have to find out uh, in a little uh, in a little while. Uh, as you're having this conversation, uh, uh, well, come and carry on if you've got some some more. So, so I've I've, uh, I've had the time to map out this uh, this little island. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know how long you're sticking around, but I can show you where all the fruit is. I don't think we intend to be here for too long, but, you know, more food is better. I um, think you could uh, help us get some of these. Well, he kind of points up to the blisters more so. Well, you, you you, you, you're not on that beach at the moment, uh, Willie. You're you're actually on a different beach. Uh, there's a there's a headland. You're you're on the original place. Yeah, you... I thought we were staying with the ship. Uh, Oh, sorry. I, uh, I thought you were staying on the beach. I thought you'd all moved back to the original point, and you were staying on the beach waiting for the other crewmen. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, because yeah, we... you you all sort of gathered up, and then you split with the two on the boat and the two on the beach. Yeah. That was my take. But don't 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 worry about it. We're we're getting to that point. So. Uh, Yes, as the three of you and, and Curios may be taking a little bit back by this uh, this figure. Uh, with a visible bow wave in front of it, the small boat uh, is thundering to the sound of, uh, of a, a rhythmic, melodical chant uh, with the oars beating the waves and the, the small boat surges uh laden as it is up onto the sand uh with the majority of the remaining crew uh upon it which who immediately uh jump out of jump out of the boat and uh start loading the items on the beach 
uh, as Bolson, uh, Julio, uh, even though Hector is the one that has uh, effectively cracked the whip, uh, you are Bolson. They they look to you for for instructions. What what do you tell them to do? Uh, yeah, so he'd, he'd kind of give, like, two crews, you know, directions. Like, all right, the five of you and the five of you all go together. The wreck is this way. Start carrying the ballistas over. And uh, with that... Yeah. Uh... No walking! <laughs> <laughs> with that, He's the... Like, go on! Good, uh... good work! And then Hector's, like, screaming in the background, probably... <laughs> Five, five of the of the crew uh, run off down the beach uh, to get over the headland where you've directed them to to go look at the ship. Uh, the uh, Finn and uh, Layla uh, appear at the uh, at the forest line carrying food, and the other five crew dash towards them uh, to take supplies. And, and there you are, Julio and Hector. Uh, you have dispensed your instructions. You watch the 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 crew separate and go about their tasks, and then you are aware there is an extra person that that you are not familiar with. Uh, how do you react to this? Well, actually, Julio is familiar with him. Actually, right. Uh, Julio's quite is. happy. He kind of breaks out in a, a big smile here, and it's like. And like, sort of spreads his arms like real wide, and is like, "Sharky!" Uh, eyes like wide and like, J "Jules is uh, what? Is that you?" Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, have, have you uh, mis misplaced an eye? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I did. I did. Where where'd you forget it? Well, it's a lot's happened. Uh... <laughs> A lot's happened. Yeah, uh, you're uh, not dead. Yes, so. I'm not dead. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Hector. Uh, Sharky here used to... Uh, he was in the, the Navy with me. Mm. Uh, Hector just kind of like... I think like, Hector's in like serious mode now, so Hector just kind of like gives a nod, um, but is very wary of this new he's, figure. He's a good guy, I promise. Good guy. Never, I, I, uh, I nod enthusiastically. Never, uh, never liked the structure. Uh, and Julio put on his arm around Sharky and his leg. But he says they're all pirates, including me. Uh, oh, uh, pirates are, pirates are cool. See, pirates when are cool. When, uh, when I'm wanting to get off an island, uh, pirates are, are cool, yeah. Well, as... <laughs> Bosun, I formally induct you into the crew. Absolutely. Bosun? Yeah. How, how did you get to be Bosun? <laughs> like I said, lots happened. I don't even know. Uh, it was definitely a mistake. Hector here is the, the true uh, boss man, really. Uh, okay, I can uh, see that. Things would be too easy just under you. <laughs> Anyway, Sharky here, Sharky here is very good. He, uh, solid, reliable. I promise, Hector. Mm. I, uh, uh, I hold out uh, my hand to, to shake. Uh, Hector. Hmm. Uh, I guess, like, Hector will shake your hand, but as he does, he's gonna ask you. Um,. Hmm. <laughs> How is this? Uh. I guess uh, what Hector asks is like um. If your loyalties continue to like lie with the, you know. The navy that you are a part of, essentially. Uh. Not particularly, no. Uh, I was until very recently. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I've been uh, secretly looking for an out for a while now. 
and uh, I guess this is uh, this is it. Um, and as I've been part of the navy, I can certainly uh, pull my weight around the uh, around the ship if uh, if I'm to be accepted. I, I I never never really got on with the uh, the, the structure of the Jukunese navy. Uh, isn't that right, Julio? It is. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's then like uh... It's, uh, you know, and he kind of like gestures to his unusual physical features. Yeah, uh, they they didn't like me, so. Uh... But yeah, I don't I don't particularly like them either. Fair enough. Well, you called you there. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Well, I'm glad you're still alive too. Well, come on then, and uh, and you too. <laughs> Let's uh. Welcome to the crew. Thank you. I, uh, you won't be disappointed. Well, the only one you'll disappoint is Jules. <laughs> hmm. It just shrugs like, yep. Yeah, oh yeah, Jules. Yeah, yeah, Jules. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. um, I mean, I guess he's yours, Jules. If yep. He, he betrays us. That's. Yeah. Yeah. His, succe his successes are your successes, but his <laughs> failures are also yours. That's fine by me. I know. I'll slap you on the back, Julia. <laughs> you ready? Good stuff. And well, then um, yeah, Hector kind of like, all right. Well, if, if that's settled, then uh, immediately kind of getting back on the crew, like, all right, let's go. Come on. <laughs> uh, and as you call out, Hector, uh, one of the crew that went to the wreck is running back up the beach. Uh, he, you know, he arrives somewhat out of breath and said uh we've taken a look we uh we think we can load the small boat directly rather than carrying the blisters uh you know, uh master times may may we take the small boat uh and and please uh master curio your your skills uh would aid us greatly in uh in removing the uh the weapons from the deck yeah. and he's but he's asking he's asking curio to come with and uh hector uh, is asking you if they if they can take the boat to load it directly rather than trying to carry it all that way, you know, for for efficiency's sake. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, I think in his mode, Hector is certainly like a uh, like a. I don't think he's a, a sociopath, right? I think he's like okay, t yeah, take the boat, right? Just you know, bring it back in one piece. I've seen the shore down there, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah. So also, the, uh, this one ran back, like keeping the hustle up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't have to message. You don't have to tell me now. Uh, maybe it's like after the game, but you can tell me like which one in particular is this one. Uh, what we which can de do. which decan this might be? What we can do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, I never think you've already had four on the deck. Yeah, uh, more for you know flavor's yeah. sake. We'll uh, yeah. we'll work it out afterwards. You can roll a you can roll a, a dice for me, and I will just tell you any any numbers to re-roll, and then I can give you I can give you a name from that. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. So yeah, uh, uh, the uh, the boat is was being loaded. Uh, the 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 deckhands that are there stop loading the boat. Uh, two of them jump in. The runner uh, jumps on the tiller, uh, and they. Uh, direct curio to get on board uh curio does curio join them yeah he, he he goes with and with that uh they set off uh at with the remaining three from that party pushing the boat back out and they set off uh around you know rowing around the bay and i'll say uh roll me a perception check hector please uh perception check yep. okay uh Not my best. Let's see. Yep. Oh, even even with that, uh, as they as they leave uh, leaving the shore, 
Now you're not on board. They're not rowing as fast as they were when they left the ship with you on board. <laughs> I think, uh... <laughs> yeah, I'll take that that success, that cat of nine tails, right? Yeah. Like... yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, of Come course. Come on! You know? And, yeah. And, and you, we don't you, have all day. Even, even with a ten, you see the two on the oars visibly flinch, and they are putting more <laughs> into it. And, yeah, you, you they... The, the, it's thought there's only two rowing, but it it does jerk forward, and you can see a little bit more white water coming off the back of the boat, and they uh, they head off round the headland, and and everybody is busy and bustling. Curio has uh, has left uh, the three of you with uh, Sharky. He has gone to assist the five uh, unloading the blisters, and I think that is probably a good place to leave it for today nice okay Good stuff. right i will just uh sign out the stream and we will call it there so bear with me cool uh thank you everybody this is uh stuck with me uh for the session yeah we've got a we appear to have a new crew member uh we'll have to see how that goes the ship is being outfitted and uh growing in strength as it were uh i and now we have what seems to be a threat to the uh, 13th fleet itself so we'll have to see how this unfolds. Uh, for anybody that's enjoying this, uh, I encourage you to seek out the Ekros Discord server. Uh, you can access it through uh, Trill the DM's uh, Twitch channel, uh, where he also hosts uh, campaigns uh, on a regular basis uh, and does law streams. And we all have a good time. Uh, I hope to see anybody that's enjoyed this there in the future. Thank you very much and uh, see you in a week.